Today we're going to talk about lip reductions. I haven't shot a video for quite a while, so I wanted to sort of go over with you the mechanics of things that you need to know, certain things that I usually say on a phone consultation or in consultation in person with someone who's interested in having their lips reduced. Obviously, if you're watching this video, I don't need to tell you why you need your lips reduced, but just as a quick summary, there are probably two principal reasons that I reduce lips. One is for uh, bad lips, things that are like, for example, silicone injected fat placed in, alloderm, bioplastique, artoplast, uh, almost anything that's been put in a lip I've probably taken out or reduced. And the second thing is uh, ethnic lips, whether it's Hispanic, African, Asian, even white lips, believe it or not. I have, I've taken uh, reduced lips on almost every single type of ethnicity that's out there and gender. So I want to walk you through some things you need to know uh, that are sort of common questions people have to ask when people come in to see me. Let's start with, um, in terms of coming down or logistics of it. I just need a day for you to come down for me to do this. You don't have to be here for three to four to six days. A lot of people ask me that question. And when you come down here, it's a pretty simple procedure. The, the one thing you need to know when you come down is you need to make sure that you give me enough time to do the procedure. So a lot of people book flights out. They come in and within an hour they're back out again. They're trying to fly back out. And I, I really encourage you to either come in the night before or make sure, for example, I do a lot of these in the afternoon, that you come in well in advance early in the morning or in the morning time just so that there's not a delayed flight or if I'm running behind, I don't feel pressure to finish your procedure on time. So those, that's probably a logistical thing that's important. Uh, the other thing people ask me, you know, in terms of, you know, how do I do this? Where, where do I do this? And I take the degree of the dry lip and the wet lip uh, excess down to create the results. So in other words, uh, what, I, what I do is I don't go from inside and try to pull the lip in, which really, in my opinion, creates a lot of problems. There's nerve issues. You cannot take dry lip and pull it inside the mouth. If you do that, you're going to have dysfunctionality. And the reason for that is Dry lip on the outside is meant to be keratinized, in other words, dry, all right? And you put your finger inside your mouth and it's wet. That difference between the dry and the wet lip must be preserved. So the incision is really going to be roughly where your new dry, wet lip, let, dry, wet lip interface is, and I recreate that. So if you sort of see where the line, you ha you'll have a natural line. If you look at my lip, you'll see a line that's there. I recreate that line. So that's something people always worry is there going to be a scar, which we'll talk about more uh, in the postoperative setting in a moment. So those are things that people need to know, and I've done hundreds of these. This is one of the few things that I, I will say that I truly, truly specialize in, and that very few pe people do this across the world, at least certainly at the level that I do this, or the frequency I do this. I do several times, do this procedure several times a week, so that's important you know that. Um, when you come down to have the procedure done, uh, it's done under local anesthesia, so people always have this absolute concern that it's going to be painful. And I know that you don't believe me until you come down here, but it absolutely does not hurt. You don't feel needles uh, at all. I'm really, really good with this. And even if you're a needle phobe, that's completely normal. You will not feel any needles as I do this. So that's really, really important you know that. Uh, after I've done the dental block, which is painless, and I've already marked everything out, we start. And by the way, the other thing people ask me, will there be time for me to consult with you again, even if I do a phone consultation? The answer is absolutely yes. You will not be rushed to do the procedure. I'll spend some time and talk to you to make sure that you're comfortable with the aesthetic objectives. I'll review my notes of what I've talked about either on a phone consultation with you before or in person with you before to make sure that we're in alignment with our aesthetic values. Um, after I've drawn the lines on your lips, I encourage you, and I not encourage you, I exhort you not to close your mouth because once I've drawn the lines in there and I'm, I, my planned procedure ready to go, when you close your mouth, you'll smear my lines. So I go ahead and get everything set up when I'm doing this. I always jokingly say the only thing that's somewhat painful is my singing. It could be a little bit bad, but otherwise you won't feel anything. A little bit of tugging, a little bit of a, maybe a burnt smell in areas I need to cauterize, uh, but you're not gonna feel anything at all during the procedure. And if there's any small discomfort, you just let me know. I, you just raise your left hand and I can definitely uh, assist you with that, but it should not be uncomfortable. The entire procedure takes between 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the complexity and, and number of lifts I'm doing. Uh, but it basically is something you, you will really not feel uh, anything at all except just my working with you. And I'll be talking you through it. So if some people want the narration, I'll spend the time to narrate with you. If people say, look, I just want to be quiet. I don't have to be talking to you about what I'm doing. But it's, I usually say, look, you know, at this point, uh, the old lip is, is removed. Uh, we're closing things, it looks good. And if you're not nervous, you're not normal. Every person in, in the chair for the first 10 minutes is, is uncomfortable and scared. But it, not uncomfortable in pain, but just, you know, scared. And that's completely normal. 
So I want to reiterate that, is that it's a normal feeling to be a little bit scared with this, but you're not going to feel anything at all. Um, the, the only thing you may feel at the very beginning is a very small dose of epinephrine where you feel your heart race a little bit for five minutes. I warn you about that. Uh, even people that have an allergy to epinephrine do very well with this because it's, it's such a small dose. Now, if you're very f fearful of having your heart race for about five minutes, I can definitely work around it in some cases, but it makes the procedure much easier if, if I use a little bit of this epinephrine that will help me for the procedure. Um, when the procedure's over, I would say that 80% of people can see the, the improvement in the top lip. Sometimes the bottom lip, you're not going to see the improvement because the lip is sort of hanging outwards a little bit because the, the nerves are dysfunctional for a short while. And by the time that everything improves, you're going to have swelling again. Swelling sets in and you're going to have swelling for about, uh, I would say on the order of one or two weeks. Um, you're going to have stitches that are, vi are visible. Uh, unfortunately, those are dissolvable. They'll go away. And I usually recommend for patients uh, to take off a week or two from work if possible, but obviously I can work with you and discuss with you what that means. And there can be ongoing uh, lingering swelling. So a few things that I want to talk to you about early on is sort of the recovery, nature of the recovery, then I want to talk to you about risks and benefits with this. So the, the, the nature of the recovery, typically if it's a small lip reduction, is not much. It, if it's a bigger lip reduction, you could have a little bit of swelling for even a few weeks to a few months but it's typically not disfiguring except for that first one or two week period of time. You may have a little bleeding. I always tell my patients it's normal if it has a little ooze come out. Um, it's normal if the area crusts a little bit. It's normal if, you, if your lip is very tight, even for two to three months. It's normal if you lose a little sensation for two to three months. Uh, typically, the most decrease is in the first week or two, but that's, that's normal to have those things. It's normal for your smile to be slightly tight. All of those things are very, very important that you, you understand those dynamics that are there. Um, I'm going to shoot another video where I'll talk more about sort of my aesthetic philosophy of how I consider lip reductions, et cetera. But this one's just sort of the basic overview mechanics that I usually walk someone through. Uh, in terms of the uh, nature of the recovery, the other thing that's important is, is risk. People always ask me, what is the risk of this procedure? And obviously, I can list you a million risks, but the major risk that I've encountered is scarring. Scarring is less than 5% of the cases, and I want you to understand what scarring means. Scarring does not mean some big keloid. You do not keloid on the lips, even if you're African. Uh, it is possibly having a very, little bit of a thicker scar that's extremely rare. I've only maybe had two or three of those, and that can be easily managed with something called 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU injections. I've got a couple of colleagues on both coasts that can help me manage that situation if it does occur, and I want to emphasize again, it's so, so rare that I, I don't think you'll ever have to have that. I've also got a couple of scar creams that I've been using now that have been really, really good as an extra charge, maybe about one, two hundred dollars more. I can walk you through that more information when you come here. It's not a requisite to get it. Uh, it is something that I do encourage patients just that are fearful they have to ever fly back again. But again, it's unlikely you'll have to do that. Um, the other thing is in, uh, possible overcorrection, undercorrection. It's rare that I do that. I've done this for so many years now that the risk is very, very minimal, but there's always a risk. So I always encourage patients that when I design a lip reduction of how much lip I'm going to reduce, that you sort of understand, hey, this is how much I can do. I can't take it all down. I understand if you look at my before and afters is really what I can do physically for a patient based on uh, the degree, degree of their anatomy, what their anatomy does. Um, and again, I'll walk you through another video more specifically about that in a moment. Uh, so those, those things are important. Um, you can have permanent numbness. I've had people with a little bit of numbness here, nothing gross, but there's obviously a, always a possibility of that. Uh, I'm very, very careful the way that I do the procedure. Having done hundreds of these procedure, I really understand how to protect nerves, under, understand how to protect everything so that you have a very safe result. Um, and there can be tightness, as I said, for even a couple of months or three months. I would say the number one reason people fly back for a minor correction if they're, they're coming back here is um, usually due to the fact that there may be a little firm tissue that doesn't completely go away. That's easily manageable, as I said, with an injectable. Um, and that's uh, something called 5 fluorouracil I don't use steroids. I try to avoid that. I think there's some risk with that. Um, so that's a basic overview of some of the things that I think you need to know. And again, as more ideas come out of my head, I'll try to shoot other companion videos to go through that with you. Hopefully this was a good video update to some of the things I've shot in the past. Thank you.